Are you ready for another life-changing service right here at Francis Mouse Church Online? Praise God. Listen, it's going to be happening. We're going to be going into part two of my series on, on my two-part series on the prodigal father. If you have never heard of the prodigal father, you are in for a treat. It will break every fear you have about God keeping you safe and bringing you into heaven safe and sound. You need to listen to it. But before we do that, I want you to enjoy this powerful time of worship and then I'll be right back to bring the final conclusion to the message, the prodigal father. Amen. to that secret place with you Lord take me in your arms and don't let go I run into your arms I run I 
Saints, I am excited that you went through that time of worship with me because 
It just gets me oozy, feeling oozy with joy every time I worship God. Because what else is there that's higher than giving him some praise? What else is there than to worship the Lord thy God? The Bible says you shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your heart. Man, I love God. You know how you know I love God? Because Jesus said when you are forgiven of much, you love much. I don't know about you guys, but I was forgiven of a whole lot of mess. Coming out of Africa, the things I was into. Boy, I look back. I can only say, Lord, I love you. That you could take a guy like that in all that mess and make him an apostle in one of the greatest countries in the world, America. Come on. What a God. Well, that, dives, dovetails, dov, that my story dovetails into the story we've been talking about, the story of the prodigal father. Many people, when they hear the word prodigal, they see it from a negative aspect. The boy uh, leaving the father and doing what he did or in all that stuff that he did. So the, the, most of the messages on the prodigal, uh, on, the, on the story from, uh, from, from Luke 15, is based around the prodigal son. The son is the driver. But is, I, I beg to disagree, with, to disagree with many of the scholars on this subject because it's clear that Yeshua is not focused on the sons because there were two sons and only one father. So it's very clear that the actor, the real actor, the real uh, starring of the movie or the story is the father because he is the, he is the what? He is the center of what is happening in the story. Both sons get to develop into better sons being around the father. So he defines both. So he cannot be a part of the story. He is the story. And so I want to finish it today, uh, part two of what we began on last week. If you did not watch last week on the teaching of the prodigal father, I double dare you by the Spirit of God to go back to my YouTube channel, Francis Mouse International or Francis Mouse Church Online. We have two YouTube channels. We have a specific YouTube channel for this Pass our Sunday services, but we also air them on the main channel, Francis Mouse International. My point is you don't have to miss the, uh, what I taught last Sunday so you can connect the whole revelation. So today I'm going to begin in verse 20 in, instead of verse 15 because I dealt with that in the previous service. Verse 20. This is when the prodigal son is now, the prodigal son is going back to the prodigal father. <laughs> you know, when the son was lost, I'd rather call him the lost son. To me, the, the prodigal is really an issue of the translators, you know, uh, uh, because they focus on the negativity of the boy, but really it should be, the, because the father actually does not call him the lost, it does not call him a prodigal. It's the father calls him the lost son. So I think it's better to, that he's the lost son. So the lost son, the lost younger son is now coming back home after having spent everything the father gave him. After having sunk so low, he began to eat food pigs were eating. You know, because of that, because of that, he decides, I'm going to go back to my father's house. He comes back to his senses. Oh, may God allow us to come back to our senses. Do you realize that, if, that no human being is truly sane? Now, I'm going to make a statement. No human being is truly sane. I don't care if their name is Elon Musk. I don't care if their name is Bill Gates. I don't care what their name is. I don't care if their, their name is Mark Zuckerberg. That's not my, no human being is truly sane until they return to the father. That's the story. I believe that. He came to himself only when, he, when the journey to go back to the Father started. That is the time of sanity. So I believe every human being is mentally insane to some degree, to the degree that they are not working with God. It's insanity because life was never designed to work without your heavenly Father right by your side guiding you along. So he came to himself and he said, I'm going to go back to my father's house. So he knew the father had a house. Because in my father's house, everybody living, living large. My father's house is not a house of luck. Even the servants uh, are, are, are admired by the servants around because they are the way best paid. They have great jobs. They, have, they, eat all, they eat every day. And here I am fighting with pigs. I'm going to go back and tell my father, I'm just making me a servant so I can have a better food than this. But he did not know he was about to encounter the prodigal father. 
The word prodigal literally means to be outlandish. Outlandish, regenerous. It means to be so reckless in what you're spending. You don't even, you don't even see, you, you don't even look around. You're just reckless. But what about God is reckless? It almost sounds sacrilegious to actually word, add the word reckless to God. Unless it has to do with his love. Oh, then all of a sudden God is reckless. He's reckless because anybody who can love uh, serial killers, uh, 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 who can love serial killers and raise them, anybody who can go for, who can go for, for who can see an apostle inside a poor, after poor has killed thousands of Christians. I mean, I mean, come on. I mean, you, you, you're going to waste your love on a guy like that? Mm -hmm. Are you going to make a guy like that write, write two-thirds of your Bible? Aren't you afraid that your name might be contaminated with having a, a character like this? That's how outrageous he is. He says, yes, I know I have no, I'm not ashamed. I'm outrageous that way. My grace is outrageous. I just literally said my mercy is outrageous. So the prodigal in the story is the father. So we pick it from verse 20. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great father, way off. His father saw him. You see, God is such a, has such prodigal desire, prodigal love for you, prodigal grace, prodigal mercy, that he's looking for the little tiny window of your returning. And the moment you, he sees you are returning, he makes a thousand steps in your direction. Listen, saints, this God you hear on uh, sometimes, the, in, and, and I, I, I want to be honest, I want to repent. There was times before I knew God that I, 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 I did paint a picture of a God who was very austere, very difficult to get along. He's so holy, he can't wait to tell you where you messed up. You know, and the Lord said to me, but, but who are you, what, who, who, not my father? Who are you talking about? Well, well, who are you talking about? And I discovered it was a God created by religion. And let's be honest, it takes a long time for all of us to be decontaminated from religion. And Jesus here is, has already offended the sensibilities, the religious sensibilities of the Sanhedrin council who are there listening to him. Trust me, they don't love the story. First and foremost, it, it's an awkward story for the Pharisees because they paint a God they don't preach. They preach a God who's austere. They preach a God who scares people. They preach a God that's very different from the God this Yeshua is preaching. A God who can put up with this kind of behavior. A God who can love a boy who pointed a finger in his face in dishonor. That he would be so forgiving. He would forget the dishonor <laughs> and bring the boy home. I watch this. The father just saw him and had compassion. So God is outrageous, outrageously generous with his compassion. <laughs> he is outrageously generous with his compassion. He will give it to you no matter how many times you do it. No matter how many times you need it, he will do it to you. He will bring it on you because he's outrageously generous with his compassion. He reigned and fell on his neck. That means God is also a prodigal, an outlandish spender when it comes to emotion. Raw emotion, pulsating, love of God. Man, I've, I've had times when God hugged me in the spirit. Man, I cry like a bit. I'm like, what? I, I said, I'm just putting my arms around you, boy. And I mean, I, I mean oozy. I was, I mean, just crying. The intensity of the unadulterated love of God wrapping its arms around me. Have you ever experienced that? Oh, how I pray you do and fast. And I'm asking God right now through this teaching to bring it home for you, to give you an encounter. I'm asking the Heavenly Father to hear my cry right now. Lord, for any of my brothers and sisters that need to know your love, need to feel that cushion, that oozy blanket of love. Release it on them. Man, he ran and hugged this boy. I don't know how many, the kissing began. I mean, this boy was like, I, I just want to be a servant. 
I, I know I'm guilty, but the father's affection are clearly a demonstration. The boy's argument, the boy's, the boy, the boy's, the boy newfound sense of insecurity because of his past, his last mistake was not enough to negate the outlandish nature of the love of his heavenly, of his father. The father kept kissing him. I'm sure he was telling him, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. We've missed you, we've missed you. But dad, I, I, I left with a horse. I came back with no horse. I'm walking. <laughs> Everything is gone. Yeah, and I smell like pigs. Yes, you do. But welcome home. And the father, check this out. Can you imagine how the Orthodox Jews felt about this thought of Jesus? They probably walked away and, and, and even planned to kill him some more. It's amazing how the religious spirit cannot understand real divine affection. The religious people don't really understand the intimacy. It really gets on their nerves. Okay, because a religious spirit understands rules, not intimacy. Okay, because God, think about this. Yeshua is making an implication. If this boy ate with pigs, slept with pigs, that's why he was smelling like one. He had not even bathed yet. So the father was kissing him with the smell of what is not kosher food around him. Think about what the Pharisees thought. Mm, they can be God. He will not smell. Somebody who smells like pigs. But according to, 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 to the, we're not even allowed, to, as Jewish people, we're not even allowed to eat that. But thank God in the New Testament we can play over that pork and just enjoy it, okay? But my point is, in, 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 in orthodoxy, it's a big deal. But Yeshua says the prodigal father kisses the boy while he yet smells. That's you. God can kiss you, love upon you, knowing you just came out of mess, out of junk. Hallelujah. Because remember, it's Paul who says it's the goodness of God, not the severity of God. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Because you're expecting judgment and you get mercy. How does that not break you? You're expecting uh, to be thrown out only to find acceptance in the place where you are anticipating rejection. I don't care who you are. That softens the heart. I'll be like, oh, are you kidding me? Am I accepted? Is this, is this for real? Oh, yes, it's for real. And it, it's, it, it gets real fast for him because the father starts to back orders. And completely ignores the proposal of the boy. Because the boy said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. By the way, this is the nature of sin. Sin is a sin against heaven. Every time we sin, we are sinning against heaven. That's why the father is the best person to, to really repent to and speak to. Because heaven, he owns it all. I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am not worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. <laughs> the prodigal son is like, boy, that's a, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I may be, I mean, I mean, I mean, this is amazing. The Lord is saying, listen, Yeshua is saying, God can do so many miracles. But this was one of those miracles God would not be do. To make a son, how do you make a son into a servant? How? <laughs> Angels were born servants. That's why they're ministering angels to those who will be heirs of salvation. You are born again a son. How do you become a servant? He's like, boy, that's not even possible. You cut in my DNA. How am I going to make you into a servant? Doesn't make sense to me. So he ignores the boy. And what does he do? But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him. What is he saying to the boy? Who has just proposed to him, I want to be a servant. He's telling him, son, this is the work of a servant. You know what servants do? They go get things for me that my children need. That's not your job. Their job is to get everything you need to look like a son of God. Go get the best robe. So some servants went to get the best robe. Go get a ring. Some servants went to get the ring. God gets some sandals. Different type of servants running around. Because an activity, 
has begun around this boy who messed it up big time. But the prodigal nature of his father is creating such a, a resonance of grace and mercy and forgiveness and provision and blessing. Everybody's moving. Put it on him. So they put everything on him. I mean, he was dressed properly, and I'm sure they bathed him because he couldn't put it on him if he was not bathed. So somewhere along here, he got bathed. You know, he got some water on his body, and all that stinky was gone. But here, here's what happened. Here comes, the, here comes the elder brother. Like I told you, the elder brothers are simply uh, supporting cast around the story being told around the father who is a prodigal in the whole story. He says in verse 23, Bring the fathered calf here and kill it. Let us eat and be merry. For my, this my son was dead and is alive again. Now you see, Yeshua was telling a story about how through his sacrifice, the father is about to resurrect dead sons. I was a dead son. Living in Africa, unaware that I even needed to repent, come to God, and let alone know there was a hell to avoid. And then one day, the father came knocking. And the son that was dead, I became alive. 1989. Maranatha, Assemblies of God. I'll never forget it for as long as I live. I walked out of that church with a, with a song, with a whistle. I felt great. I was still poor, broke as you can be, brother. But I was feeling good. I was home. I was alive. Life back to God. And this is what the father is saying. This son who was dead is alive again. This is the story of Adam. Remember what he says, he's alive again. That means there was a time the boy was alive to the father, then died. The Bible says, you know, there was a, came a time when sin rose up in me and I died. Paul says that. You know, there was a time when Adam was living with large with the Lord, alive to God. But then there came a day when he listened to the devil and ate the fruit and he died. But then there comes a time when this Adam rises again. And Jesus is here to tell us, I'm here to raise dead sons on behalf of a prodigal father who will not give up on his sons. What a story. But here comes the older brother. Now his older son was in the field. You see, he was in the field. In the church, but being as religious as he can be. So you can be in the house of the Lord and not know how to connect with the prodigal God. You can be in the church, but but restricted by your own concept of a God who is austere, is a harsh, you know, I mean, you have, to, you, have to, you have to tremble, you know, in coming in his presence, you, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, all of that, I mean, you can do all the religious duties that you think need to be done to please God and yet not know who it, not know his prodigal nature. That's what's about to happen to the prodigal, to the older son. He's about to encounter the prodigal nature of the father and how to, how to live in the father's house because apparently he was not living like the father's house. Now it makes sense why the father did not agree with the proposal of the son who left, who said, make, be, make me like one of your servants. Why? He already had a son who was behaving like a servant. He's like, come on. I already got that problem right now. <laughs> He's never left, but he acts like a servant. So you want to come back? And, and so which means I'll become a, a father without sons, just a bunch of servants? I got a son acting like a servant. He's in the field because he thinks he's supposed to be in the field. He, we could be having coffee because everything in the field. I don't need him. I've got too many servants. They, you know, he's talking about the... <laughs> He said, listen, that boy could be with me. He, he could be asking me about, you know, uh, about how did I build this? How, Father, what makes you think this way? We could be having the time of our life talking about what's in my head. But you know what? He's out there in the field breaking his back because he behaves like a servant. And then you come back, 
Do you want to become a servant? I'm sorry. I need, I need me some sons. And he goes on and he throws a party. So the boy comes, who was the servant. Son by destiny, servant by operation. He comes. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. <laughs> so he called one of the servants and asked what these things mean. This boy was such a servant in the head. Even when things were going on in the father's house, he didn't feel secure enough to go and ask the father. He's so accustomed to the servants, he's asking the servants to give him information that could come directly from his dad. He was messed up. And some of you are messed up in the house of the Lord. Life is hard because you keep living like a servant. And all God has been trying to make you do is acknowledge your sonship. And then lift your chest up and then, yes. You know what God allows you to be entitled? Yes, he does. I know we, we, we come against entitlement in many areas. But let me tell you, when it comes to sonship, God would rather, be, would rather, be, would rather have you be an entitled son. Because at least you're going to be asking him for some things that belong to your inheritance. But this boy had been living the father. He felt not in that or anything. He was just acting like a servant. And something in him told him, the harder you work. If your father see you coming back with the servants, I um, mean, all sweaty like them, your father would say, oh, I have a good son. Look at him. And the father all, all the time was like, why does my son keep coming with the servants working like this? Well, I guess he must have just loved the field. The father thought he loved the field. And it's about to come out. That he never loved the field, he just thought that was what it would take to please his father. He never loved the field, he just thought, it's what I need to please this father. So watch what happens. And he said to him, your brother has come. <laughs> and because your father <laughs> has received him safe, and sound. Your father <laughs> has killed the fatted calf worthy of kings. You mean you, you, that boo we've been, we've been feeding all this? We had no idea I was preparing it for the boy's arrival. Boy, this boy flips. The second son flips. The elder son flips. The one who remained sleep. So you can remain and still be lost. So the father had two lost sons. One was lost on the outside. The other one was lost in the house. Both are found on the exact same day. And it's the father who allows them to find who they really are by making sure that he protected the, their, their relationship with him. He knew, he knew that if he stood in the middle, they will eventually discover who they really are and how to operate in his house. So the brother gets upset, real mad. Real mad. But he was angry and would not go in. Some of you, you are in church, you are angry because some of the people that backslid, you know, and you know they, didn't, they, don't, they have not been as holy as you have been. They just came back to church recently and all of a sudden they are prophesying, they are getting words of knowledge and you can't even hear God. Tell you go left or right, but they seem to be hearing God and you look, I don't get it. You know, I've been in a church all of my life and they, they, I mean, I saw them caravanting around, around, stepping around. Now they're just back on revival and they're, they're getting all this. You are angry because your religious nature is being incensed. Because you cannot understand why God would use people that, whose story you know so well, whose story of failure, moral failure you know so well. How dare they come back to church and within a month God is allowing them to prophesy. You're angry. I've met a lot of angry people in the church. There's a lot of angry people. And they're angry because they remain, they worked hard, they were in there in every church service, they fasted. And then they see these so-called prodigal sons walking in the favor of a father, and then they measure their own character to these other characters. They have more character than the other characters. But they have, the other character is experiencing more grace than there, and it's not because it's called religion who block grace. The spirit of religion who block grace. 
out of your life. Watch what happens here. But he was angry and he would not go in. Therefore his father came out. What a father. He came out and pleaded with him. Notice that the fathering spirit is an initiating spirit. This is why we are having so much problem in America and around the world today. As the level of fatherlessness rises, we are losing in the home the one who carries the anointing for initiating. See, when the protocol was coming, it was a father who initiated the contact. He saw him from afar, he ran. Initiator. When the boy couldn't come in because he was angry, father left the party to go and get the other son. Fathers are initiators. Who initiated the whole plan of salvation? Jesus or God the Father? God the Father. He's an initiator. That's why Jesus said, whosoever receives me has received the Father who sent me. Fathers are initiators. So the Father said, okay, we got a problem. You stone, we have a problem outside. <laughs> another, another lost son. But I get to get both of them back on the same day. What a miracle. So he goes and he says, he pleads with him. Can you have the image of God pleading with him? Now, you see, now the religious mind can't handle that. But read your Bible. How many, read the Bible. The Bible is full of scriptures of God pleading with men. Come to me. Come to me. That sounds like pleading. Come to me. For if you come to me, I'll wash your sins away. If you come to me, I'll return to you. If you come to me. Oh, that's a pleading father. <laughs> He's really pleading. Whoa. That's not the God I was raised on. I was raised on a God who can't wait to whip me up. I was, raised, I was raised on a God who couldn't care less if I went up in hell, you know. I mean, I, mean, I was told about a God who does not wait. He could get you into, I mean, not the pleading God. He's pleading. You know what the pleading is? He was begging. Come on, please, Johnny, come in the house. Come on, son. Don't do me like this. He's pleading. The story is about the prodigal father. Not the sons. They are both messed up. The story can't be about them. They are both messed up. The story is about the father. He's the only one who gets it. So check this out. So the boy answered. So I said to his father, Lord, these many years, ah, there he goes now, religion. These many years have been serving you. I fasted. I woke up at six in the morning. You know, this boy never even used to pray when he was home. I never transgressed your commandment. Oh my God, boy, he was keeping score. I never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet, you never gave me a goat <laughs> that I might make merry with my friends. See, the religious spirit always thinks God is a taskmaster. I did this for you, I did this for you, and what did you do back? And God and the father responds. But as soon as the son of yours, the boy conscious, he's still he's, he's, he's on a rant. But as soon as the son of yours came, who has de devoured your livelihood with halots, you killed the fatted calf for him. As soon as the son of yours, in other words, he's not my brother, <laughs> he's your son. He's not my brother. Boy, do I see this in the church. And God said, Woo, I get it. I understand. But let me tell you something, son. He said to him, Son, you are always with me. And all that I have is yours. And the boy, What? You mean I've been going in the field all these years? <laughs> For what's already mine? Yeah, I just thought you liked to be with it. With, with, I just thought you've got some, some of my servants have become good friends of yours and like to hang out so you go in the field. That's what I thought. It's today it's the first time I find out you have been working to please me when I'm already pleased with you. You're always with me. All that I have is yours. And then he said, it was right that we should make merry and be glad. And I was, I'm not going to be, I'm not, because of you, in other words, I'm not going to let your religious spirit make me feel guilty for loving some of my children who may be more broken than you are. I'm still a dad, okay? I'm not going to be apologized to you, you know, that, my, that your brother might be more messed up more than you are. I'm just glad he's back. It is right the family comes back together. It is right for us to be glad. For your brother was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. 
the, poor, the truth of the matter, two brothers were found, two sons, found their place in the house, father's house on that day. The prodigal, the, uh, uh, the, 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 son that, the, prodigal the, the son that left, the lost son, regained his family. He regained his, his, his sense of identity and, and belonging. All of that he regained back. He got over his guilt and he came back home and became a son again. The elder brother got delivered from a demon of religion so he could finally enjoy his dad who said, I'm always with you. You mean you've been wanting to do a party? I thought you never liked parties because I've been wondering, why haven't you? Everything I have is yes. In other words, you are, were you waiting for me? Were you waiting for me? I thought you could have just killed a cow. How many, by the way, do you want to kill? Why haven't you done it? Can you imagine how the boy must have felt? Look, are you, are you, are you for real? You mean all this while I could have done it? I said, oh boy, not just the goat. You could have killed everything if you wanted to. Wow. Changed his life. Since I don't know which of these two sons you relate to. But I believe that the church is full of these two sons. In whatever angle, spectrum of sonship you're coming from, may the Father heal you. May you realize that what connects us, what is going to cause your story to end well, is understanding you serve a prodigal father who is willing to go all out for you to be delivered for you to find your sense of purpose and your sense of belonging. I cannot close a message like this without praying for these two categories. Father, I pray for every one of your sons and daughters who's watching me right now, being part of this service, who has been, bed who has been burdened by tremendous guilt. The enemy has harassed them, ransacked them because he won't let them forget the mess they created. That somehow the enemy has convinced them that, he, that, that because they are, they are not able to forget it or forgive themselves that you are in the same club. When you forgive them the moment they came back to their senses and say, I'll go back to my father's house. I'll say, I'm sorry, Lord. Lord, I, break, I ask you to break that spirit of guilt and condemnation that has paralyzed their faith in Christ Jesus and their intimacy with God because you cannot connect with God when you are burdened with guilt and condemnation and shame. I ask this in Yeshua's mother name. Lord, I also pray for those who have been in the house of the Lord. From the day they born again, they have been faithful. They have gone after you, Lord. They have fasted. They have prayed. It's not that you haven't seen these things. You, you, you honor their sacrifice. You honor their, their prayers. But Lord, it's not to impress you. It is not to buy anything from you. Lord, for, to extend the spirit of religion, made them feel like they had to do something in order for you to love them. Lord, release them from that burden. It's such a big burden to carry. To believe that a man actions can make God love them. That's a demonic burden to carry than to simply believe that they are already accepted in the beloved because they are in Christ Jesus who's already been loved and accepted by the Lord himself. Can I break that spirit of religion? Lord, may your sons and daughters begin to enjoy an intimate connection with you like they have never had before. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Saints, as I come to the end of the series and the end of the service, I want to give an opportunity to, to show your prodigal father your appreciation of his generosity toward you over the years, over your life, by giving a seed of tithe or by giving a, 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 a seed that you want God to multiply within the kingdom of God. You can make an investment in the kingdom of God. You know, you can be a blessing to this ministry, especially if what I'm teaching is a blessing to you, then will you look on the screen? There are different modalities of giving to this ministry. Even though you're international, you can also give to this ministry. 
we make it possible. We have got many channels of giving that can handle international givers as well as local U.S. givers. Thank you so much. May God bless you a thousand times more for your giving into this ministry and for listening to this message. Until next Sunday, uh, this is Dr. Francis Mao, Senior Pastor of Francis Mao Church Online, saying shalom, shalom, amen.